In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to show you how to use the Magic Motion tool to pan across a still image. We've already had a lesson that shows you how to enlarge or, or reduce, zoom in or zoom out using user-defined settings, and another lesson on using the presets. But if you'd like to customize it a little more in terms of simply moving around an image, um, we're going to show you how to do that a little bit with the pan operations of user-defined interface in the Magic Motion tool. To do that, I need an image, and I took this one, put it on the screen. In order to get to the tool, I need to make sure it's highlighted. And then I can either click on the magic wand, or I can click uh, the Alt key down, hold that down, and press the number 2 key. That's my keyboard shortcut. That will get me to all the presets in the image over here. But if I go ahead and enlarge it, and I wish this uh, reduced itself a little better here. I have to move it this far in order to see it. There's it. The last option is User Defined. And so I'll click on that, and that will bring up my Magic Motion Designer. Once again, we're going to be using keyframes here in this tool. And uh, the keyframe, again, gives you the attributes of a frame in a moment in time on your screen and then it allows you to change those attributes at another frame and that gives you the illusion of motion or some other kind of features. Now in order to move the camera from one side to the other I need to make sure that the size of my image is not the size it starts out with. Let's see what happens if I do that. We start with it in the center and the keyframe is default. I'm going to click here on the line anywhere I want, and then I will click the diamond at the bottom to set another keyframe. And when this is active, wherever I move the image to will be the place where we see it at that moment in time. So I'm going to drag this, and put the center of the image over here. Now if I don't change the size of the image, if you look at the preview screen in the upper right, let's see what happens. I'm going to click the right arrow, we'll hit the play, and I do have the image move, but I also have it including areas off the screen. So what I need to do if I want to use the pan tool is I have to reduce the size of the image as well. Let's say we're going to create it and make it about this size here. And uh, I see that this is the highlighted area over here, and so I now have it reduced at this point in time. But I also have to go to my second keyframe, and I can use the arrow here to move. And it also has to retain the same size. So an easier way to do that, to make sure it doesn't get smaller or larger, I'll take this keyframe here, I'll hit the minus key, and I'll make that go away. Then I'll go to my first keyframe, and my first keyframe, I want it to be smaller, and we're going to start over here in the left. So I've changed the size and I've changed the center and you can see it on the screen here. Then if I want another keyframe, say halfway through the length of this particular still image, I'll press a diamond at the bottom. We'll set a keyframe here. And at this moment in time, I'm going to keep the size the same, but I'm going to move the image over to the face of these two people in this bronze statue. And then if I want to move it even further, I'll set another keyframe, press the plus key. And at this point in time, let's say I I, I'm going to go up to the upper right corner. And then if I want to adjust it even more, I can set another keyframe. This time we'll move it down. And just for fun, we'll set another one over here. And at this moment in time, we'll have it go all the way back to the left, but stay within the boundary of the picture. And at the very end, we'll set our last keyframe, and this will move it to the upper left. And so when I go ahead and try to play this, I will see the actual center move on this screen, and I will see the preview window up here. 
We'll go ahead and play it. And we see the center move along the line. And this gives me a customized look. Oops, I went a little bit out of the frame there. And so I didn't follow my own rules. So I would have to undo that if I want to stay within the picture. But you get the idea about how to do that. So you decide the size of the image you want, and then you just set the keyframes. Again, to speed up the motion, you decrease the distance between the keyframes. In fact, I could take all of these and move them pretty close together on the left side. And that would create quite a different effect here. So we're going to stop that and we'll play. And you see here it moves very quickly now. And then it stops at the last keyframe. Since I have none to the right, it in effect freezes the motion at that size and that spot. But this is a way to customize your own panning. And again, if you want to remove a keyframe, you can move to it with the right arrow or the left arrow, unless it's the first or the last one. You just hit minus and it will, and it will make the keyframe disappear. And you can take one or more of them out until they're all virtually gone and start all over and decide how you want to change that. I'll set just one other keyframe over here. Let's see, just put one in this location, hit the plus key, and then we'll have it go maybe this far. So this is a nice way to customize uh, the motion when you're panning using the Magic Motion Designer and setting your own keyframes. You can use the presets, but you get a little more precision when you do it this way.